Hello and thank you for joining me for another episode of Vasalia Tales. Last time we were declared war upon by the Sestani of Iberia, giving us a new enemy to the southwest who endangered our recently acquired province of Tolosa. Additionally, the Sequani joined the bunch of tribes to the northeast who were threatening to invade us. I sent Zenon to deal with the Sestani. I thought I saw a nice easy target for him and was drawn into an ambush by my attempt to fight them. Luckily for us, the enemy's light forces were not enough to break Xenon's line, so despite being ambushed, he was able to rout and in the end completely destroy the Sestani forces, wiping out the threat from them entirely. I tried to use this as leverage to get peace from them, but they refused, suggesting they still had cards to play. As the Raiti also joined the alliance of clans coming against us from the east, I decided to pull Xenon back closer to the city, fearing that something was going to go wrong and hoping that the Sestani didn't really have any more forces. Now let's continue. Xenon had gambled that his generous and trusting attitude towards both his enemies and the Gallic portions of his forces would foster positive relationships with the ever-growing body of Massalia's foes. This approach was largely unsuccessful. Zenon's glorified name was chanted with joy in the city, but with hatred in the countless camps of those wishing to unseat the high and mighty Greeks. Throughout southern Gaul and the Alps, warriors from all walks of life lusted after the fame attached to wiping the Massalians from the map, and so as talk of Zenon's exploits spread, so did the number of men willing to battle him increase. It's the winter of 268 BC, I'm essentially waiting for something to go wrong at this stage in the campaign, waiting to see who will invade me and what I should do with Zenon's forces next. You can see I've hired a noblewoman, Fortina. She is going to help me administrate the city of Massalia by increasing public order and tax revenue. And as she develops as an agent, more and more bonuses will become available. Our other agent, Ifyanasa, is currently hanging out in the Sesetani territory. I needed to get some intel on whether they were able to amount another attack on Tolosa. They have a substantial navy, but their army isn't really up to much. So I felt safe keeping Zenon back near the city instead of having him hang around Tolosa ready to receive a Sestani attack. So I'm going to move him into a more steadily defensive formation in the middle, right next to the city, facing off against the northern approach where both the Helveti and the Sequani could come from. There's also the Raiti to worry about. I don't know where they'll come from, possibly from the north through the territory of their allies, the Helveti. But overall, I've got a now stronger defensive position just in case they do invade, although we do have no indication that they will at this stage. Moving on, I wondered if I could get peace with the Sestani, because they didn't really look very strong. I was convinced they must be weaker than they bluffed in previous turns, and they indeed now were willing to go in for peace. Perhaps what armies they did have were defeated by other factions. I wanted to try and get some money out of them as part of the deal, and they seemed willing to agree to a modest payment in reparation Your for our previous fair, battles. So I'm going to get some I free money, and I now know that my borders on Tolosa are slightly safer, agreed. further heightening my confidence that defending Massalia with my main force is a good idea, and seeing who is going to be the next comer. Sure I did try and get some peace from some of the tribes who seemed to hate me, but none of them were up for it. But a very interesting development is that an Insubra's army is now standing on the border between Genua and Massalia. It looks like they intend to attack but haven't declared war yet. It was highly suspicious. So I decided I'm going to focus all of my attention on this. Uh, we can see to the north that no enemy armies are on the way, so it's safe for me to use Xenon to just completely block off the route the Insubras would take towards the city. So I fortified the road. His zone of control will stop the enemy army getting past him if it does try to go for our city by declaring war and suddenly invading. I'm linking him up with the forces previously commanded by Jelon, so he has the maximum number of forces available. Jelon is going to sit back as a reinforcement army. I'm also going to send in my newly recruited hero to join Zenon's men. He will train the troops and gradually increase their level over time, improving their effectiveness. So we've got our defensive situation ready. Now I just waited to see whether the Insubras were actually going to declare war on me. Moving into the autumn, they didn't, so they weren't immediately willing to declare war on us, which I thought was quite strange, actually. I decided to bring Zenon back very slightly so that if he is attacked, he can be reinforced by the city garrison. 
The risk here is that my zone of control might not be wide enough to stop the Insubras going round me to the north and attacking the city directly. I wasn't sure whether this was the case in this particular scenario, but I decided to gamble that it wasn't because the payoff of getting the extra garrison troops involved in a battle would be worth it. So now we're in the spring of the next year. The Insubras are still just standing there. They haven't invaded yet and I was getting impatient. I uh, felt that I didn't have any initiative here because I'm basically waiting to be attacked. I decided that it might be better for me to take an offensive strategy in this situation. Moving into summer, they still hadn't attacked and I decided to put my offensive strategy into action. The Insubres are diplomatically isolated. There are no consequences for me declaring war on them at the moment. They don't appear to have any direct defensive allies or true allies. They're not at war with the Romans, which I thought they were, which is annoying because I was planning to get in with Greetings. the Romans by declaring war Speak on these guys. But instead, I'm going to do it just for myself. Well. I'm going to end this tense sure standoff and make war official. All. I'm hoping that by opening hostilities, I can get the Insubras to actually gods, bother to invade me rather than Sound just waste horn, my time threatening sword, to invade sitting on the border. My plan gods. is simply to destroy them as they come in. I'm going to fortify the position immediately in front of them, so we if they do the attack, battle. they will have to take extreme Advance. losses going up against a Greek fortification. And then once they're destroyed, I'll be within moving range of Genua. I can immediately take one of their provinces and then either sue for peace or further assess their strength and perhaps go on to wipe out the threat from the Insubras entirely. My master states that he has noted your decision to ignore his previous requests to stand down from Massalian lands. It is with regret that he sends me to inform you he has received permission from the Royal Massalian Council to punish you for this transgression. My master has decided to declare a state of war between his soldiers and yours. Being a man of honour, he wishes for you to know this in advance so that you may attempt any preparations you wish before his elite warriors arrive. He even offers to allow you to retreat to a position of your choosing before he attacks. What reply shall I convey to him? Just as I'd hoped, the Insubris forces immediately advance on Zenon's position. Zenon could, in theory, be in trouble. We can see the enemy have a level 4 commander, a superior commander to Zenon himself, and their army is full of swordsmen, the bane of Hoplites, spearmen, who make up the majority of Zenon's melee infantry. But I do have my fortifications. I'm confident I can hold off the Insubris forces by forming a Hoplite phalanx and just preventing the enemy from getting to the weak flanks of my spear formations. Let's see what I can do. Here we stand. We will defend our people and our lands to the last breath. By all the gods, my sword will fall from my cold, dead hand before I retreat. Make the same oath. Be courageous. So it sounds like Xenon's men are ready to receive the enemy and the enemy are on the way, approaching from the southwest and the east at the same time with an evenly split group that is going to break itself up to surround the entire camp as it approaches. You can see I've put all of my cavalry outside the camp. The plan is to allow the enemy's forces to attempt to get inside the camp and then raid them from behind with the cav. Here are some of the hoplites. I've put my elite hoplites uh, up front in my formation to receive the brunt of the enemy's attack. The militia are going to wait behind as reserve. I didn't try my militia to face off against the enemy's uh, powerful swordsmen or some of their elite spears. So the enemy are making their way towards the camp entrances, all apart from one regiment of cavalry which snuck in round the back, realised it can't go anywhere and then ran away taking a few javelins on the way. Once it escaped it decided to go for my own cavalry which was a situation I was quite willing to tolerate because my cavalry will beat the enemies due to a sheer numerical advantage so I'm going to chase after the enemy a little bit. The enemy's cap decided to engage with me after all, after first appearing to run away. The engagement immediately begins to go in my favour. My cavs throw their javelins and take out a bunch of the enemies. And then once the melee gets uh, properly engaged with, the forces are about equal. Mine are a bit better due to having more experience. It's pretty hard to tell what's going on here because both the enemies and my men look pretty much the same. They're both mixed Gallic cavalry. The enemy cav uh, lose their first regiment pretty fast, but they do have a second regiment backing them up, which I've also got engaged with my own cavalry. 
Uh, this time it's a one-on-one -on -one unit engagement, so it's going to be more in the enemy's favour, but my men are still winning out just due to being better in uh, melee combat. Plus I can get the rest of my cavalry in there pretty sharpish. The enemy cavalry fall back at this point. They almost draw my cav into a battle against their spearmen, which would have been quite clever, but I managed to notice that and micromanage my cav to get out of there in time. They did start taking some fire from some enemy javelinmen, who I'm now going to chase down with the cav. The main fight you can see has already started inside the camp. The enemy are actually pushing into my formation quite well and pushing us back. But of course my hoplites are moderately difficult to go down. They're heavily armoured and more skilled than the average warrior amongst the enemy ranks, so they're holding them off okay. Some of the enemy's camp have broken through to my second line, now facing with the hoplite militia, which they won't do very well against. Here on the south side you can see it's a similar situation, only here the enemy has tons of swordsmen, whereas what we just saw on the east there is mainly spears. These swordsmen are superior against hoplites, which means the situation could be quite dangerous. These swordsmen uh, are actually gradually killing my hoplites, I was taking more of the losses here and on the west side where it's a similar situation. So I needed to get my cavalry over there really, to go and attack the enemy's swords from the back, which is the perfect use for the cavalry in this situation. First I'm taking revenge on those enemy javs who have been uh, luring my cavalry around the place. I charge into them, take out a few. I had to get out of there because the jabs have mixed amongst the enemy's spears, so I run away and get my cavalry generally out of the way. But as I do, uh, you might think all well, these units here are routing. It looks like they are, but actually it's a very loose form attack on my cav. I've drawn out two regiments of heavy spearmen from the enemy's attack on the east side which is perfect really, because they're going to be chasing my cavalry for the whole battle and now they're not going to be fighting my hoplites, completely ideal. You can see the enemy are uh, pushing quite heavily against the south side with swordsmen, but I'm using my javelins to take out large numbers of them. You can see the ground is littered with their bodies and more javelins are still coming in, annihilating enemies at the back. At the front they're going to be doing okay fighting against my hoplites, but I do have Xenon uh, overlooking this part of the battlefield, inspiring the men, which will improve their morale, even though they are going to be suffering losses. On the west side, things are actually going uh, worse. They, this is the worst point in the battlefield for me. Some of the enemy's heavy swordsmen are really thwacking their way through my hoplites, so this was the place I decided to help first with my cav. I got all three regiments to charge the enemy's swords from the back. At first I thought the enemy swordsmen might just take this charge because they didn't rout right away, in fact they went back to Eager, but then they went straight back down to Broken and started retreating, even though they're actually at uh, still pretty good strength. So I've knocked out a bunch of these enemy sword units without having to kill them, and I've saved all my spear units here on the west side. My cavalry will kill a load of them as they retreat, which will make sure they don't come back. I'll shatter all these units, I can't fight with them for too long because the enemy spears who I kited off are coming around to chase my cavalry, but it's good news in all. These enemy swords are going to be vital to enemy's plans, so taking them out will not help. My west side is completely freed up, so even if the south or east was to break now, I have additional men I can reinforce them with. On the east side, I deployed my reserve of swords to start trying to push the enemy spearmen back out of the camp and it began to work. You can see we fought our way back up to the actual camp entrance now. Those swords should have an advantage against the mainly spear-based enemy regiments in that area. On the west side, I could use my newly freed up spear units to go and attack the enemy from the rear, but I didn't want to bring them outside of the camp whilst the enemy's heavy spears were rushing around nearby because I thought I might draw their attention. And I don't want my hoplites fighting uh, out in the open with enemy's heavy spears because that would actually go quite badly. Back on the east, my swords are doing a good job of pushing their way out of the camp. These low-level enemy spearmen just aren't good enough to fight with these uh, admittedly lightly armed swordsmen, but skilled enough to take out spearmen with relative ease. On the south side, I pulled all of my hoplites back because they were taking uh, moderate damage and replaced them with the militia hoplites backed up by Xenon's royal hoplites. Since they were fresh and fighting with the enemy's tired troops, they actually did really well even against the enemy's swordsmen and began pushing the enemy back from the south. Back on the east, I was going to charge this enemy spear unit to try and get it to rout, but it routed just before I arrived, so I stopped. Overall, the balance bar is now equal. Things are looking okay. You asked for my opinion, so do not be offended when I give it. You have made a grave mistake. You fall prey to Zenon's scheme by letting him have his war. You will profit far more than you can have imagined, has he not had a share of the glory already? 
If you truly wish to uphold our principles, then Gelon would have been the choice of command against the Unwashed. Instead, he acts as a second rate magistrate, while Zenon's name moves the most reasoned crowd to frolish delight. To ratify his selfish wishes is to demonstrate to the people that he's worthy of ignoring our traditions, a lie that he will be convinced by most of all. At the southern camp entrance, Zenon's men are now pushing the enemy back outside of the camp. You can see Zenon himself fighting with his red shield and sword in the middle here, well bloodied amongst the enemy ranks, who are looking pretty thin compared to our own ranks at this stage. The enemy are exhausted, which is the main reason they can't compete against these elite hoplites, though Zenon's men are relatively fresh, just like the militia who are backing him up. So he inevitably destroys his foes and is able to start moving forces out of the southern entrance of the camp. Right outside the camp is the enemy general sitting on horseback and Zenon is going to lead his men to duel with the enemy's general and bodyguard. The enemy's general cab decides not to stick around too long for this engagement against Hoplites, which is a fine choice by the enemy and Zenon doesn't stand a chance of catching him up so he has to let him go and focus on killing these escapees who are trying to get away from the battle. So the main fight that remains is over there on the east side. All of the enemy's routing units are going to be easily defeated by my cab. That will make sure that once the enemy army is defeated, the majority of their regiments will disband and Zenon will have a chance to advance forwards on Insubra's territory. The east side was easily won, of course, because my forces coming out of the south part of the camp could simply go around and attack them from the flank, which destroys their morale, which is already low, having seen their general run and the majority of their forces be routed. So with this, the battle is pretty much ours. The remaining enemies will run. I'm going to continue playing on to kill as many of them as I can to minimize the number of Insubra's forces left at the end. It ends as a heroic victory for Zenon's forces because in the beginning, the enemy did seem to have an advantage, but really the advantage was ours all along. The balance bar doesn't take into account the helpfulness of a defensive camp against the enemy, so actually, even though it claims to be a heroic victory, it was quite an easy one to win. We captured around 400 of the enemy, but you can see loads of the enemy's units have disbanded, so even releasing enemy captives at this stage won't really grant them any troops, because releasing troops into a disbanded unit doesn't do anything. But I decided not to release them anyway, actually, in this case. I decided I'm going to enslave them to improve the Massalian economy. I don't want to do this too much because it's going to increase the risk of a slave revolt. But at this stage, Massalia is very stable and will benefit from the economic bonus of getting these Insubras captives to work for us. So now I have the opportunity to move forward against the enemy. The Insubras aren't completely broken. They have another army with seven regiments in their city and they have the city garrison, of course. The survivors from the mountain men are close enough to the city that if I attack all of these armies back here will reinforce it, which means one large battle will have to be fought in order to secure this area. At first I thought I'd go about this the plain way, simply attacking from the front. The balance bar shocks me about how big the enemy's advantage was, or at least how big it apparently was in the situation. I figured the enemy's garrison troops must actually be quite strong, and they do have some non-negligible forces coming in with their reinforcement army. So I decided to do a very brazen strategy of simply changing my direction of attack so that I'll be attacking in between the two armies, effectively getting myself surrounded deliberately. The motivation is that it will give me a greater chance of being able to defeat either the main army or the reinforcements before having to engage the other part of the enemy's force at all, meaning that instead of fighting one battle where I have a giant disadvantage, I'll effectively fight two small battles in the same engagement where I'll have an advantage in both. We'll see if that plan actually works out next time on the Salia Tales. The campaign against the Insubras was a new page in Massalian history. Never had a general led a personal army to wage war without the obvious motivation of self-preservation. It was a new and terrifying prospect to the Massalian nobility, who feared that the combined popularity and military power of Zenon would allow him to declare himself the effective ruler of Massalia when he returned home from his campaign. And these ideas weren't out of the range of options envisioned by Zenon. He felt that a satisfactory revenge on the council would be to gain independence from them altogether, 